Today, uh, I like to share with you about the spirit. Uh, basically, I want to let you know the uh, Bible teaches us a very important thing. That is, uh, man is constituted of three parts. Uh, God knows uh, very well uh, of, of human beings because He is a creator. So His saying is a correct answer to man, I think. Man is constituted, I say, of three parts. Uh, the first body and soul and the spirit. Uh, today, uh, most of people, I think, uh, know only man is constituted of soul and the body. Uh, psychologically, uh, mentally, uh, we have the soul. Everybody knows it. Then, uh, physically, we have a body, right? A two parts. Uh, two parts being. Many people know only about uh, the human beings the, uh, consisting of two parts. Uh, a soul and body. But in the Bible, God teaches us uh, man is constituted. Man is constituted of three parts. Uh, beside of soul uh, and body, man has a spirit. When God created human beings, you know, uh, God breathed. Uh, the into human beings through man's nostrils, his breath. We know this uh, through Genesis chapter two and seven. Then man became a living being, living living soul. Uh, then uh, uh, in this universe, only man can. Uh, communicate to his God. We can read this from the Bible in Genesis. After God created the human beings, God could converse with Adam. God can speak something to create a man, and a man can say something to God. Man and God God and man can converse with each other. We know this very well, right? God and Adam, God and uh, Eve, and even Cain, God could converse with them, right? Because in the Bible, God is what? God is the spirit. And man has a spirit too. So, God and man can uh, communicate to each other. So, we, uh, knowing this, knowing this, what? The uh, man has a spirit. It's a very important thing, I think. So, I say again, man is constituted, constituted of three parts. Spirit, and soul and body. Uh, I want to read for you some Bible verses. Uh, first, uh, in the Old Testament, Zechariah uh, chapter 12, verse 1. This is the word of the Lord concerning Israel, the Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, and who forms 
the spirit of man within him. In this one verse, God says three items, very important items. What? First, He created heavens and earth and the man. Then here, not only man, as the spirit of man. Here, God created three things, three important things. First, heaven. Then, the earth. Third, man. Here, emphasize the man's spirit. God forms the spirit of man. Then, First uh, Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God. Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, here we see a uh, three parts. Uh, Paul said like this, I pray, I pray God, your whole spirit and the soul, and the body like this. And also, New Testament, Romans chapter 8, uh, 16, verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Here, we can see two spirits First spirit, the spirit, uh, capital letter spirit, yeah, S capital letter. This is God's spirit, which is Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I think, I think, the spirit Himself testifies with our spirit. This is our spirit, the human spirit. Yeah. So here we see two spirits. God's spirit and man's spirit. Here Paul said, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit. Two spirits testify together that we are God's children. We uh, see three uh, verses from the Bible. Zechariah chapter 12 and Romans chapter 8. And Thessalonians chapter 5. Here we can say, we can see those three parts of human being. Spirit and soul and body. And then Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thought and attitude of the heart. This is Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The, the word of God is just like Sharper, sharper sword. So, that sword penetrates, the, uh, penetrate, and dividing, divide, soul and spirit, and joint and marrow. Here, we are told that uh, the God's word, very, very sharp. Even then, any double-edged sword, so it can penetrate and divide soul and spirit. 
and joint and marrow. Here we see the uh, sharper word, sharper sword, uh, divide soul and the spirit, right? Usually it means soul and the spirit is, is mingled, and they blend together. But when the sharper word, sword, divide, can divide the soul and the spirit. We can explain like this. And then another verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, verse 9. As it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 11. Verse 11 is very important verse, I think. For who among men knows the thought of a man except the man's spirit within him. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Uh, God has prepared for us very precious things. From the eternity, He has prepared for us. But the Apostle Paul said, No eyes has seen yet. Uh, through our eyes cannot see. This means, yeah, right? With our ears cannot hear. And uh, even um, through our mind, we cannot understand. We, we can understand that uh, God has prepared for those who love Him. Mysterious thing. But here, Paul said, God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Only Spirit can teach us. The verse 10, the latter part says, The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. This emphasizes the importance of the Spirit. Verse 11 says, Man can know the thought of man with the spirit, with the human spirit, yeah, man's spirit, he says. In the same way, the uh, thought of God, only God's, through God's spirit, we know. Through God's spirit, we know God's thought, he said. Without the spirit, we know nothing of man except the Spirit of God. We 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 are we are not able to know the uh, thought of God. Even the deep things of God, we don't know without His Spirit. Okay, uh, then uh, what is? Uh, Christians uh, regeneration uh, we uh, oh, uh, usually say about the regeneration is another word the uh, born again uh, Gospel of John chapter 3 uh, in reply verse 3 in reply Jesus declared 
I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. This means flesh, flesh, man's flesh, flesh begets flesh. Spirit, only spirit can beget the spirit. Uh, so uh, we know this. Uh, when we are, when we are regenerated, uh, that means uh, originally we are dead in sin and the trespasses. Uh, but uh, Christ quickened us uh, who were dead in trespasses. And sins. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And through our regeneration, our spirit was quickened. We are alive with Jesus Christ. So we could see. The kingdom of God <clears throat> because we are born again uh, this is a gospel of John chapter 3 verse 3 in reply Jesus has declared I tell you the truth no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again because we have been born again we can see the kingdom of God because we were awakened. We were, we became alive. Uh, we have been quickened. Especially our spirit was restored. So we can see the kingdom of God through our uh, spiritual eye. Okay, then uh, I want to read it for you. Uh, Proverb, Proverbs in the Old Testament, chapter 20 and 27. The spirit of a person is a lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. Here, the spirit of a person is a lamp of the Lord. If uh, our spirit is, yeah, is, is just you know, is dead. Uh, we can see the, our innermost parts, our deep uh, things hidden in us. We don't know because the spirit of a person is the lamp of the Lord. But when we are regenerated, uh, this lamp is uh, is uh, is lightened so we can see we can search search all the innumerous parts of our being i want to read for you galatians chapter 5 verse verse 16 this i say then work in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature, the sinful nature is the flesh, are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, adultery, and uh, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and the envy, drunkenness, urges, urges, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the 
fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 24, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. We see in Galatians chapter 5, what is the fleshly life and the spiritual life? If one person follows, if one person follows the flesh lust, the expression, his life, is just sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry. Just ambitions, fractions, envy, hatred, drunkenness, something like this. But one follows the Holy Spirit. The one uh, lives by the Holy Spirit. His fruit is just love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, like this. So uh, Christians uh, need to live by the Spirit. So today my subject is the Spirit-driven life how we can live the, uh, by the Holy Spirit leading. This is very, very important. First, we must know the, uh, to live this kind of spiritual living. First, we, know, we must know first, we human beings have the Spirit in us. Uh, the Spirit, Holy Spirit in us, in us, as a teacher, as a comforter, as a, as a person, uh, as our Lord, no? Then we need to live by Him, through Him, in Him. This is the the union life with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> uh, if a, a Christian do not live by the spiritual leading, their life actually just the, the fleshly living, committing so many uh, so many sins no doubt uh, so uh, uh, we need to live by him by Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ and in Christ Jesus Christ and how do we live in this way first we need to the uh, no we have the spirit in us then second we need to have the desire desire to do God's will Gospel of John chapter 7 and verse 17 if any man is willing to do his will he shall know the teaching any man, if any man is willing to do his will, uh, if you want to uh, really uh, to do his will, then you know, you know, you are able to know his teaching, his will. Uh, Jesus Christ can teach you everything. I want to read for you uh, Epistle, first epistle of John chapter 2 and 27 And as for you, the anointing which you received from him abide in you and you 
have no need for anyone to teach you. Anyone to teach you, but as he, his anointing teaches you about all things, and it's true, and it's not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in him. Here we are able to know what the Holy Spirit, uh, which is anointing, anointing abide in us all the time. Then he can teach about everything. It says. Like this. So if you want to know, if you want to do His will, then you know. You are able to know, no doubt. And Acts chapter 17, verse 27 says, uh, Apostle Paul said this in Athene, Areobo. Uh, they would seek God if perhaps they might grow up, might grow up, seek, uh, no, no, I, 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 I read it again. If perhaps they might grow up for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. If we grow up him, we grow up for him and we can find him. Paul said like this, because God is not far from us, like that. He, even God is in us today. Christ lives in us today. Holy Spirit abides in us. So he can teach us every time, every moment. We can be taught by him. Really, if you want to know his will. He can teach you everything. So, here, uh, Paul said, grow up, grow up for him, grow up for God. You know? What does it mean, grow up? Feel around. You know? uh, if we grow up for God every time, whenever we, uh, we face this a, a kind of circumstance, uh, how we, we ask to God, what shall we do? Then we begin to grow for Him. Then eventually we find God's will and we can do His will like that. Okay, yeah? Uh, then uh, uh, lastly, I want, uh, I want to emphasize one thing. Then I want to finish. Our mind is very important. I, our, uh, if we want to live by Him, uh, we, if we want to live by the Holy Spirit leading, then we need to set our mind all the time on the on the on the on the Holy Spirit, and then uh, all the time. Uh, uh, we just rely on, rely on him, and we need to uh, be united uh, with him. Then uh, the uh, Holy Spirit can teach us uh, every, everything. Then another, uh, another uh, one, uh, another thing I want, uh, I want uh, st stress and emphasize that is conscience. The uh, Apostle Paul said in Acts 24 verse 16, So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and men. Because in our spirit uh, consists of three things also, the conscience and the fellowship and intuition. Conscience is very important. We need to listen all the time, how deep in our heart, the, the voice of conscience. Okay, in this way, as Christians, we can live by the, the Holy Spirit leading. Then we can follow God's will. I think 
the may the Lord bless you all, and uh, you all uh, can uh, live uh, the spiritual living uh, through the uh, following of God's leading. May the Lord bless you. Amen.